Hello and welcome everyone to the Green Campus Update, where I'm going to be going through some of the very exciting developments uh, following on from the crowdfunding campaign and launch of Green Campus. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who's supported. We've raised over £10,000 and had about another £10,000 invested in the company, which has really given us what we need to, to carry on. I've taken out a loan. I've got some printers coming from China, which will print painfully slowly, but we're going to be able to now start printing something. I'm doing all this so I can be transparent about what's happening with the money. And also I'd like to share this with all the kids out there who I don't get to spend enough time with. So you can uh, find out all about what's been, been going on and keeping us busy. I'm very lucky to be able to work with Misha Teasdale who runs Green Pop in South Africa. We're, we're trying to bring their reforestation festival over to the UK. I'll tell you a bit more about that later. But Misha shared with me a quote from a book that, that he was reading called Blessed Unrest by Paul Hawking. In the book, Paul says, if you look at the science about what's happening on the earth right now and you aren't pessimistic, you don't understand the data. But if you meet the people who are working to restore the earth and you aren't optimistic, you haven't got a pulse. <laughs> so I really hope that what I can do here is share some of the good news about the amazing greenies out there. So this update is going to be broken into different sections. First of all, there's going to be a top level global update. Secondly, there's going to be a technical update, which really deep dives into the details of the 3D printing technologies that we're working to develop and, and, and build. We're also going to look at the prototype manufacture processes and also the materials development processes, testing different biocomposites that we're working with. Then there'll be a community update where we start to look at the different lands that have been offered to us to build green camps around the world. We've had the most beautiful people coming from all around the world saying, check it out, I've got this amazing piece of land, let's do a green campus together. So I'm going to introduce all of those different opportunities in the hope that you guys can stay with us on this journey and we can deploy green campuses all over this beautiful universe and grow food forests and meditate, learn the Dharma, teach everyone really deep ecological literacy. Create an inspiring example of the culture of compassion. That's the whole idea. Okay, lastly, there's going to be a Q&A session where I'm going to go through some of the frequently asked questions in the different comment sections of the articles that have been published for plant-based news and on forums on Facebook and Instagram and other places like that online. For the top level update, I'm very happy to say that we raised over £10,000 in pledges on the crowdfunding campaign. So thank you so, so much to everyone who's donated, pre-ordered night stays or bought some organic jumpers or any of the other rewards that we were offering. I'm also happy to say that we raised about £10,000, maybe 20 in the form of investments, selling percentage shares in the company. This isn't quite the 25 grand that I need to buy all the equipment and rent a space to set up a dedicated large format industrial printer. In the meantime, I've taken a loan out from the UK government. I've invested already in the extruder and a couple of other components that we need. And I bought a very affordable 3D printers from China that are about 60% the size we need to print our panels for the Green Camp system. But these are unbelievably slow it takes two days to print one panel rather than two hours if, if we had this fitted onto a really heavy duty xyz gantry or robot arm i'm going to go into more detail and in all of that in the technical section so in the meantime in order to keep raising more and more money i'm keeping the crowdfunding campaign open and we're going to be hosting some fundraising events so that we can keep putting money in the kitty so we can hook this bad boy up to a serious XYZ gantry or a serious robot arm and make the printing of the Green Camp system, this basic life support set of modular interropable sub-assemblies, we can make that as economically and simply available to people as possible. The fundraising events that we're gonna be hosting are first of all, monthly Dharma weekend build parties, which we'll be having down here at the prototype site in the south of England. Now, because of COVID, this is only going to be restricted to our really core team members to start off with. We'll be printing with the very slow printers from China, one panel every two days, but we'll put those together and start sharing with you how the prototyping's going. We'll also be doing our best within present restrictions to 
create and develop the Dharma Weekend model with lots of vegan, amazing vegan food, vegan fitness on the on the beach, meditation classes, yoga classes, and the first structures that we're building, dancing, music, speakers, stuff like that. And as COVID restrictions lighten up, we're going to be opening that more and more to the public. And these domes actually create as a private accommodation unit actually a, a very simple to keep sterile environment where people are socially isolated. We will be sharing updates from our monthly events and we invite you to pre-order stays for future events. We've got rollback dates kind of programmed in if we're unable to come together. Please visit create.green slash program slash dharma hyphen weekend and we'll let you know as soon as that's available for the public to join. Otherwise you can follow the blog feed there about construction progress and things like that we're also keeping tuned into covid restrictions with rollback dates in place for our first yoga teacher training it's going to be a 23-day residential yoga retreat with the amazing yoga linda yoga school from barcelona so that when our first camps are up we're going to be able to deliver yoga teacher training We've got our first course earmarked for April, which is ambitious. If not, it's going to roll back until September. And the idea is that when you come to the course, you've got four yoga experts, each in a different discipline, anatomy or the various different uh, strands of yoga, which will be able to help you to start your own career as a yoga teacher and present the different sort of specializations that you can go down within that career. Our hope is that thereby we can generate a really stable and flexible, strong energy at Green Camp. And hopefully we have then a group of yoga teachers who will be able to teach at Green Camps around the world and keep spreading that strong, stable, flexible energy. So if you want to find out more um, and book on, you can see create.green slash program slash YTT 200. That's short for Yoga Teacher Training 200. Okay. Another regenerative fundraising vehicle that we're working on and developing is an online reforestation festival. We're working on the on the ground reforestation festivals, but because of COVID, we can't really have festivals now. So Green Pops Tree EO, Misha Teasdale, is doing his amazing reforestation festivals in South Africa. And our green team member, Robin Collings, who builds He's a producer of Glastonbury and Boomtown Festival. He's been really nurturing and uh, helping incubate Green Campus with his lovely warm energy. I introduced Misha to Robin saying, why don't we do reforestation festivals? Robin was like, well, mate, we can't do festivals now because of COVID. But Robin doesn't sit around. He's developed this online festival environment where it's like a computer game. You're running around this virtual festival with your avatar and you see on the stage your favorite artists DJing away or performing away. They capture them in volumetric 3D, sort of cinematic, real 3D ca characters, and you can see your favorite artist. I propose, why don't we do an online reforestation festival? We did a pitch for Denzel Fiegelson, who set up iTunes, who's always just been there with his amazing, lovely energy, helping good things to happen. He was there with Steve Jobs, developing iTunes, which is where the iPod and the iPhone and the Apple Music Festival came out of that Denzel still runs, I think. His label, Platoon, has all these wonderful artists. Uh, I think Robin said that a lot of them were coming out of Africa. They seem to be from all over from what I could see, but like just amazing talent and, and presenting it in a beautiful way. Anyway, I said to, to Denzel, why don't we get a button on the iTunes store that says, come and see your favorite artists at an online festival environment using Robin's online festival platform and ticket sales go towards reforestation festivals well reforestation and ecosystem restoration around the world Misha was like yeah man that's great it turns out Green Pop is an official implementation partner of the United Nations Decade on Restoration which is starting in in January next year so the UN Decade on Restoration is a response to what all the United Nations climate scientists are saying that the best response that we have to come back from the big civilization busting climate crises we face, desertification, deforestation, drought, food shortages, uh, ocean collapse, ocean acidification, not to mention climate change, that the climate going crazy and all of these storms going up like crazy, the rate of extinction going off the chart. 
Um, the United Nations scientists say that the best solutions that we have are nature-based solutions, restoring ecosystems that naturally provide oxygen, which is useful. Oxygen levels are dropping out, especially around cities all over the planet. That sequest moisture into the ground, that stop the desertification, that grow more forests. So the idea is that we have these online reforestation festivals, put the button on iTunes and people can see their favorite artists, have a good old jam. We can even have on the ground reforestation festivals where people know their ticket sales are creating reforestation programs there they can take part of, but also supporting all the other United Nations implementation partners who are, who are restoring ecosystems all around the world. Not just forests, but pampas and marshlands and all the other areas which provide us with that's where we came from that's where life comes from and we can't survive without it so Denzel was really positive in his support he's up to something now uh, really big apparently but when he's got a bit more time next year we're gonna hopefully keep petitioning to get that button up on a really high profile place and maybe a little sliver can go into helping green camps become part of these restoration uh, ecosystem restoration camps Okay, so those are the, the, the fundraising vehicles and, and projects that I'm going to be continuing to, to develop and host so that we can keep raising funds to build proper 3D printers that can take big extruders like this and print a panel in two hours rather than two days, which is where we're at right now. But at least we're somewhere. We're getting somewhere, which is good. Another very important top level update is about how there's been an amazing response from some of the world's most amazing 3D printing engineers and architects, really technically qualified people who are just top of their field, who've come forwards to offer their help with Green Campus and our mission. I'm gonna introduce these people in the community section where we introduce the, the lands that they come from in the hope to establish these characters in the context of the ecosystems and communities that they're guardians of, and hopefully we'll have green camps there. So you know where to go and visit them and join in with that sort of maker space that we're, we're trying to uh, franchise. So now it's time for the technical update. And because we didn't reach our fundraising targets to build these big 3D printers that can print panels really quickly, I took a loan out from the UK government and I bought what I could afford is these 3D printers from China. They're very affordable and they're amazing. They're doing the absolute pushing the limit of what's possible with the technology at that scale. The pros of these 3D printers is that we are able to start printing something. It may take two days for a panel, but at least there's a panel there. I can show people printed out of these materials that we can build structures, we can see what they're like inside and we can start to get feedback and optimizing them. A lot of people wanna see that this is possible and come down to this prototype site. So thank you very much guys for giving us this at 6,000 pounds a printer is pretty much unbeatable for the size. It's about 60, 70% of what we need. This also means that we're gonna be able to print a, a row of panels so I can set this panel to print and come back in a week and I'll have a row of panels. I won't have to reset it after each panel. Insha'Allah, that, that's, that's what's happening. It's also an XYZ gantry printer, which is standard technology in 3D printing, just like a desktop 3D printer, but very much larger. This means that the slicing software that you use to create the print file is standard, like Cura, kind of amazing, powerful, free software. Also the firmware that runs the printer is Marlin, and this can be monitored with laptops and all of this is really standard 3D printing technology. So anyone with a basic technical interest will be able to emulate what we're doing and we can set people up with these 3D printers. That's great, apart from the fact that it's painfully slow. One panel in two days just really is not a business case. We want one panel in two hours, as I keep saying. The last real big pro is that it's cheap. For £6,000 to get a printer means that, you know, we could get a fleet of printers printing together and still we don't touch doing it properly with industrial machinery so the cons are that these printers are painfully slow as i mentioned and because they're smaller it means that if, if i want to print one panel like this which is about two and a half meters or a bit less i'm going to have to break it down into smaller chunks like this but as i say at least we're able to start printing something but the problem with that is, is it makes it a little bit structurally less sound. It makes more opportunity for leaks. It makes it more difficult to clean. It takes longer to put up and takes longer to put down. That's what we're working with. That's the best we've been able to afford. So we're going to go for it. 
That is one of the cons of working with smaller platforms, however. This is all very good for our proof of concept stage. Another problem with these low cost 3D printers is that they use spools of filament rather than pellets. So this is a biomaterial mixed with recycled plastic, which fits into a normal fused deposition modeling 3D printer. What we want to do is feed them with these granules. These pellets are 10 times cheaper than, the, than these filaments. So really it's a no brainer. We wanna be printing with a pellet extruder like this one. Anyway, if, if I can't manage to raise the funds, I've bought this filament extruding kit, which will allow us to take our pellets, feed it into here. This will extrude and start to wind up our own filament. Another painfully slow process, but hey, we're gonna try and prove this concept as much as possible. I'm waiting to turn that machine on until I hear back from our material suppliers and also the people who made these machines. Massive Dimension and Philobot, I think they're brother and sister companies or sister companies, they um, have gotten in contact saying that they'd like to develop this project with us. They really are making some of the best extruders uh, at the best prices on the market. So that's very exciting development. Hopefully they can maybe even help us get access to a, a very large format XYZ gantry platform. I've been in touch with all the biggest XYZ gantry platforms in the world, trying to cost up building a 3D printer. I've been in touch with all the top robotic arm 3D printing companies in the world, trying to cost up building a 3D printer. And I've got all those different plans kind of on the table and I've got what is the most economical and what I think is the most accessible for people as our options. I'm going to wait till we do the testing with the Chinese panels and speak to these guys in detail, speak with some of the other 3D printing experts before we decide to, we also need to raise a bit more money before we decide exactly where we invest. So Philobot, who make this filament extruder, are the sister company of Massive Dimension who make this pellet extruder but this is a large industrial scale one. These filament extruders tend to be for more domestic scale production. Not to say that people aren't using them, feeding loads of filament into one extruder like a AI build. It's a really amazing solution they've got, but because a ton of this is one euro a kilogram and it costs about 10 euros a kilogram for filament, why don't we save 90% of our costs and, and, and try and go straight to this platform? So I'm in talks with those guys. They're interested in, in doing some kind of a collaboration together. Fortunately, they approached us and said, why don't we collaborate? So I'm really hoping that we can get down on the drawing board and work out what is the ultimate, ex ultimate platform for 3D printing in terms of output as productive as possible and as simple as possible and as low cost as possible so that we can start building them in garages all over. The robotic arms are difficult to, to set up. They're difficult to operate and they need a huge space. You know, I can't fit it inside this kind of room. Also, if I send back this filament extruder, I save 5,000 pounds, which can go towards building the either the big XYZ gantry or the robotic arm. So look forward to next month updating you on where we're at with our choice for the industrial scale 3D printing platform. It's all very much a work in progress. Speaking of materials, I'm very happy to say that our sponsors, UPM, the largest paper company in the world, who, who make one of the two main groups of materials that we're working with, one of three actually, they have offered us a biomaterial reinforced with diamond that's already rolled into, into filament rolls so that we can work with these low cost Chinese printers to start printing our first prototype panels. This, this diamond reinforcement means that the first panels will be as strong as possible, like 4,000 MPA stiffness. It's really an amazing opportunity. It's not the greenest material, but if they're just sitting there not being used, it's, it's a surplus from some experiments they were carrying out. Well, it's just being wasted anyway. So I'm, I, I'm really grateful to UPM. Our first domes are gonna be made out of diamonds, <laughs> which is also great. With the, the money that people have donated, I'm also going to be able to buy some more of this sycamine material, which is 80% bio-based. It's definitely not completely free of toxic bonding agents, but we'll be pouring that into frames that we print to create the transparent panels. So I've 
purchased all of this with the money from the loan that I've taken out. And the idea is that I can do all the proof of concept work with this loan and I'm taking the risk. And then we can use the money that we raised through our crowdfunder campaign now through investments, if you'd like to invest and you haven't already, but also through our upcoming fundraising initiatives that I've mentioned so that we can build the green manufacture system, this industrial scale 3D printer uh, with the money from that sort of crowdfunding effort. Please stay tuned as we keep you updated with the design and honing in on exactly what the best platform is. As I say, it's kind of a toss up between a big robotic arm printer, which we can do for 25 grand, plus all the costs of building a dedicated space, which is a big industrial space, or an XYZ gantry printer, which I've got quotes for around 30,000 pounds, which we could build even in a space like this in a garage, which is kind of where I'm leaning towards. Some of the experts I'm talking to say we should do both, which would be ideal if we had that kind of money. Anyway, stay tuned. I'll keep you up to date with all the testing and uh, look forward to showing you the first structures and the first panels we're printing on the build party on the 15th of January next month and at future build parties all over the world. Okay, I think it should be really reiterated the difference, like this extruder from massive dimension is incredibly heavy. That's the kind of thing that you need if you're gonna print massive beads like this and start making, this is a 3D printed panel, start making some really sturdy structural components. This is in stark contrast to the 3D printing extruders on small on the small Chinese printer that we have, for example, that it weighs only a, a few hundred grams. So in order to mount an extruder like this that can print a few kilograms an hour, or we can print their next generation, which prints about 10 kilograms an hour, we need a really large XYZ gantry or a robotic arm. Another con with the robotic arms is that those things are massive and they can move at about two meters a second which can kill someone if that's gone out of control for some reason. I wanna make this technology as domestic as possible. If you can install and operate a washing machine, then you could use one of these. It'd be really great to domesticate them at that level, supply people with designs to print all the eco furnishings that they need for compost bins and worm farms and stuff at home. Okay, so that's all for the technical development for now. Let me rather show you it, actual stuff that we've printed at scale. I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, thanks everyone for your support getting us, getting us there. Please do keep pre-ordering night stay at the different green camps that are up online. They're only prospective now, but hopefully with your pre-orders, we'll be able to build them. Wherever you pre-order a night at a green camp, that's your vote saying, I want a green camp built there. There's also a little form you can click and fill out saying, I want you to build a green camp here and this is my land. And, and then you can get all your friends, the pre-order night stays there and with the funds we raise, we're gonna build the camps in order of their popularity, really try and keep it as democratic among our members as possible. There are some discounts that are available now in terms of night stay and membership and access to our programs that will run out soon. So please try and get those because those are lifetime discounts. Mm -hmm.